Hello and welcome to the Launchpad. This is an offshoot of the Startup the Storefront podcast, where we talk to the founders of companies that are just getting started and whose stories we find compelling. Today we talk with Jordan Nathan, founder of the cookware company Caraway. Born of an unfortunate incident where Jordan was actually poisoned by his Teflon cookware, Jordan set out to educate and inform the market while creating a high-end line of ceramic alternatives. So without further ado, I present to you our conversation with Jordan. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we have Jordan, the founder of Caraway. Jordan, thanks for joining. Tell everyone a little bit about Caraway. Yeah, thanks for having me today. Caraway is a direct-to-consumer home goods and kitchenware brand. We sell non-toxic ceramic-based cookware. It comes in five beautiful colors, comes with a storage system, and currently we sell on our website. I'm really excited to talk to you for, for one really big reason. The hardest thing for at least in my household to purchase is always a mattress and then pots and pans are number two. And I think it's so difficult because there's so much marketing that can, can confuse you at any direction, right? And so what, when you decided to go down this road, what did you see as the opportunity in the market? What was something that you saw people may have gotten wrong and you wanted to either bring light to or give your own take on? What was like the impetus for starting, for starting Caraway? The story of why I had started it was a couple of years ago, just like any other night, came home, started to cook. I had Teflon coated pans mm-hmm. at home, put one on a burner. I think I got a call and I forgot I left the burner on with the pan sitting there with no food in it. About 45 minutes went by and my whole apartment ended up being filled with fumes. Felt really sick and nauseous and gave poison control a call. And they had educated me that I was likely exposed to Teflon poisoning from the the fumes from the overheated pan and really couldn't wrap my head around the fact that something that I was cooking off of and touching my food was potentially dangerous. And so started to really dig into the category, found that 95% of nonstick cookware is made with Teflon. Um, and mm-hmm. felt there was just a really big opportunity in the space to create products around safety and not toxic materials. But kind of, as you mentioned, it is a really challenging purchase for consumers just because there's, you know, four to five core materials out there. There's lots of marketing jargon. There's price points from 20 bucks all the way to a thousand. Most people don't even know what's in their kitchen. And so it's, it's almost this category that has this like perfect wave of almost every problem from pricing to, you know, lack of brand affinity to materials. And so it definitely made it challenging when launching the brand to think through how to, how to, you know, correctly decide what to focus on and, you know, what was the final product we wanted to launch. That's well, first of all, it's an incredible story. I'm sorry that happened to you, but I'm glad something positive came out of it. So what's your first step is your first step researching, obviously Teflon, you go down that rabbit hole, realize this is crazy. And then what do you start doing then? Do you start thinking like, what materials can we use that would be beneficial for cooking, but also non-toxic? What does that look like? Yeah. First step was really looking into what else was out there. You know, there were things like cast iron and stainless steel and, and ceramic, which we use today. And just by kind of looking across online reviews and talking with friends and family, one of the consistent themes that I found was that a lot of people were just daunted by the experience of cooking and it didn't feel easy to a lot of people. And so stainless steel and cast iron, they're great options and they exist for a reason, but they're heavier, they're harder to clean. And I wanted something that was nonstick and easy. And uh, ceramic is this amazing material that's actually been around for about 10 years and has really kind of sat on retail shelves. The story has never been told. People who buy it don't know why they own it. And wanting to be a digital first brand felt there was a really unique opportunity to take something that already existed that was safe and, you know, bring it to market in a different way using a digital platform with education and storytelling, you know, as a means to bring the brand to life. That's super smart. We'll touch on the digital media strategy in a second, but you want to develop a prototype, let's say, how do you do it? Do you just go to Alibaba or like what, what's your first step as it relates to just getting these prototypes and seeing, you know, how you could start to design and create the pots and pans? Well, Alibaba is a fantastic tool, but prior to Caraway, I actually worked at a company called Mohawk Group, who owns four consumer product brands, and I ran their kitchen division called Vremi. 
and actually had launched 200 kitchen products under that brand, everything from cookware to bakeware, um, some small appliances and gadgets. And so, you know, fortunately wow. it came with some experience in the category and came with prior relationships. So that kind of sourcing was a, was a little bit easier on, on my end just because I had experience. The, the challenging part was really finding factories who could execute the design we were looking to make. As you've seen, it, it does look very different. It's manufactured in a different way. We vet our factories based off, you know, a number of, of eco qualifications. And so, you know, we were definitely more stringent on that that side of things. And it, it took a little bit longer, but, you know, a couple of trips over to the factories and, um, you know, we were able to find one that could really, you know, see our vision and execute the quality we were looking for. And then in terms of, I mean, that's a great insight in terms of that you got to see all these companies basically brand themselves and kind of work as an insider. And so you got to see what worked, what didn't work, what was successful. How important was the digital strategy or at least was that equally important as having the right product and the right look to you before you officially launched the company? I I would say so. Um, I mean, we we really started with, I think, a product first mentality. the, The brand certainly evolved since, you know, the initial, the story and founding. I think what we've learned is our website's just a really great platform for education and around materials, around home decor, around helping people learning how to cook. And so we really see it as a massive marketing tool. And and I always say this, but I wish early on I knew how important the digital product was because in many cases, it's actually more important than the physical product. And so as we've grown, we've really continued to invest more in, you know, not just our website, but our blog, our, our social platforms and so on. Yeah, you know, it's funny. During COVID, we've had interviews with so many different founders. Theragun comes to mind the most. So Dr. J from Theragun, basically his whole, like they were releasing a new product and his whole thing got delayed. And so it was the time for them to say, what do we do? And they just leaned so heavily into education. And he became so aware to the fact that social media, Instagram, videos, all of that just became a way for him to educate the market on recovery, which was now staying at home and not really going anywhere, right? And so he just doubled down on education. And my takeaway to all of this, and this has kind of always been the way I viewed it, but recently because of COVID, I think has been cemented. It's like companies today are are really two forms. You have the the media side of your business and then you have your product and you have to do both really, really well in order to sustain, in order to survive, which makes it kind of hard, right? Because, and this kind of lands on the next question, you have to have capital to do that. You You have to know what the costs of those are and some of it might feel like a crapshoot to an inexperienced entrepreneur, but it's, it's massively important. In terms of raising capital, how did you go about that? Do you have investors? Are you at a seed round? What's, what's your current stage of funding? Yeah, so we raised a 5.3 million seed round back in March of this year. We've actually got over 100 investors in the business, a mix of angels, VCs, family offices. And so we've We've taken more of an approach of getting a larger number of people to support the business, and it's it's proved invaluable. You know, we have we've got a network of over a hundred people who any company we want an introduction to, we have that connection, and so it's it's been a really, I think, different approach, but has been really helpful in the short term. So you close around pre-pandemic. <laughs> we we, we got it in. We got it in just before. We're super lucky. What has it been like during COVID for you? How have you gone about launching this company during, has it helped in some way or have you just leaned on what works? What's, what's that been like? I think overall, super lucky to be in a category that people are still buying from. Uh, obviously, yeah. people are stuck at home. They're cooking more. People are taking dollars that would have gone into maybe experiences or clothing or you know something for work and are now investing it in their home. And so I think most home categories are seeing an uptick. Um, and we've definitely, you know, benefited because of that. But on the the supply chain side, we've had many, many challenges because of that increased demand. Right. A lot of facilities or, or vendors um, are at capacity for production. Things are taking longer. There's not as many workers at the factories. It's tougher to get freight to get over from Asia to the U.S. And then general costs as well are just skyrocketing right now. And so you know, we've been doing our best to meet demand, but have seen, you know, a number of challenges. For instance, we actually were sold out of our product from April of this year, all the way through August. 
pretty much at any given moment had a six week ship date on our website and every batch that came over, you know, into our warehouse just went out to the back orders and it took quite some time to get fully back in stock. Well, I guess it's a bit of a happy problem, but never ideal for your sort of that first, that first taste or the first introduction. But I guess people understand. I mean, now it's crazy times in terms of selling your product. I mean, I'm going to ask the obvious question here. Grocery stores are the place to be or were for a long time. Are you at least considering selling your product in grocery stores or in a retail format, or do you just want to stick to an online e-commerce type of business? I think as we think about the world, distribution is a huge advantage. Currently, our site's our main channel, but we do sell on platforms like Goop, uh, West Elm, Crate and Barrel, All Digital, Food52, a, a number of others. And a lot of our approach to marketing is to actually be in places that you wouldn't expect. And so... Mm -hmm. A lot of our content strategy, a lot of the imagery we use, a lot of the marketplaces we sell in, many of them are, are more focused on design, home decor. And so, you know, grocery is certainly an interesting area, but I think for us, we feel it's more expected. And so we try to go after, you know, some of these areas where maybe cookware doesn't exist today and we can really stand out. And I think in one sense, it makes it a lot more approachable uh, for the consumer. I think it makes sense. I mean, I mentioned this off air, but I'll mention it during, during this interview too. My wife's obviously an architect and owns her own construction company. And the thing that as soon as she saw the product, she's like, this is beautiful. And I think at least for us, you know, you want your kitchenware to be a piece, you know, you want it to look good. You want it to, people come into your house, they see it. It's not this obtrusive, ugly thing. It doesn't need to hang from the ceiling. It can, it can just like be sitting and still look really good which is important. How much time did you spend on that, on just getting the design right and then the color combinations that you guys have? We spent about a year to get the product to market. We just made it in time for holidays uh, in 2019 for our launch. But you know everything throughout the brand, we wanted to be an experience. So colors was actually one of the hardest pieces of the product development, I think. Yeah. I think almost like two or three weeks before we placed our first order for a production run, we still had 10 colors in the running. Um, and had to make a quick decision. But we always wanted something that didn't exist in the category that felt super natural and toned down from a lot of the colors you typically see across the kitchen industry. And everything, you know, from the fit of the handle to the unboxing experience, the manual itself is is a really fun booklet. Most people don't yeah. really think about the manual, but there it it's is. actually, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a, our consumers, one of their favorite pieces of the whole experience. And kind of as you referenced before, it's really tough being a digital brand today because every single touch point has to be amazing. And it's not just in the physical product, but the emails, the website, SMS, social, and really pull that full experience together of what the brand stands for. It's funny you mentioned the uh, the touch point on the pen. My So literally, that's what my wife was like, this is so intelligent. So there's a part of it, maybe you can explain it a little bit better than I can, just to give people a sense of uh, what I'm talking about. The handle? Yeah, and the handle, exactly. Yeah, uh, it's, it's basically a finger rest to prevent your hand from going up to the point where the handles actually get hot. The product development process, there were things that we brought into the experience that we wanted to fix, but we spent a lot of time looking through data and reviews and, you know, handles getting hot, not knowing where to put the lids, um, capacities not being large enough. Um, we really wanted to not necessarily reinvent cookware, right, but just add some thoughtful features that made the experience better. I loved it. I thought it was like so smart. I was like, of course they should do this. Why doesn't every pan do this? Right. That's when I was like, oh, they're taking it to a level that doesn't currently exist in the marketplace. When you think about, or even when you raise your funds or when you closed your round, are you, what are you raising it on in terms of evaluation? Are you raising it like a tech company or are you raising it as like a hardware company? A mix. Most of our investors are, are consumer focused. Tech valuations are certainly much, much, much higher, almost two yeah. to three times. Uh, I've seen past that as well. And when we were raising, COVID just hit, uh, markets weren't doing well, consumer mm -hmm. had a couple poor exits or you know failures over the past year. And so valuations have actually gotten pushed down quite a bit. Um, okay. And so typically you're raising at a multiple of, of your, your, your run rate. But also, you know, it's up to you to kind of pitch the, the vision of the business and how big it can really get. Yeah, how big can it get? What's on the horizon? So you've launched, let's call it your, your seed product. In terms of the, this market, how do you view what you want to do? What is, are there a number of products you want to keep rolling out? Um, give us a window into the future of all the things that you might have in store. 
Sure. You know, we look at cookware as a really fantastic entry point into the home and the kitchen. It's, you know, where our roots lie. It's got such a big market in front of it. But we also think the same principles that we brought to cookware can also be applied to many items in the home. And so as we start to grow and expand, we call ourselves Caraway Home for a reason because we do see opportunity mm -hmm. to bring non-toxic materials, thoughtful features, storage, and education you know, to the rest of your home. And so over the next couple of years, we'll certainly be looking to expand the product line, everything with the same functionality, features, and also you know, just giving you exactly what you need. Um, in the short term, kitchen is certainly where we're a little bit more interested given we've started there. But you know, as I think we, we expand and hit some core categories, the beauty of the home is there's just so many products that you can launch. Yeah, it's almost overwhelming. I was instantly thinking of like, oh, it'd be cool if it came with like a spatula or, you know, these, what I would call like these high margin items that fit with the look of everything else that's, that's all, that people are already consuming or purchasing. Definitely. And we've already started di differentiating a little bit. We, we launched with our cookware set. Um, it came in five colors. It was just the set. Um, we've since launched single pieces. Uh, we rolled out a linens line with dish towels, oven mitts, aprons, and things like that. And so there's a nice mix of like hero products in the category, but also right. accessories that people also need. And then in terms of your digital strategy, what makes it up? Is it, especially during COVID, I guess, is, are you guys doing a lot with influencers or you do, is, is Instagram the main social media channel? Obviously you mentioned you have an email list. How do you, what are some of the things that you're, you're really leaning into during this time? Instagram's a big piece of our business, not just on our own social paid, but as a paid acquisition channel. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been really fortunate to work with an amazing group of brand ambassadors. We actually have over 500 uh, influencers in our brand ambassador group. Most of them are, are Instagram related, but also, you know, scattered across blogs and YouTube and some other channels. And so we really lean into that group as advocates for our brand, telling the story. Customers really trust them. And it's been a great community to have who really love our product and can, can vouch for us um, outside of that. Doing a lot of the same tactics as most traditional direct-to-consumer brands like Facebook ads and Google, but also leveraging, you know, our content channels and creating the website as a destination for people to come to. You know, it's, it's obviously great if you come and buy the product, but we also want you to get more out of it and, and learn, you know, about how to decorate your home or how to, you know, incorporate other healthy products, you know, into your cooking routine. Totally makes sense. I wanted to ask you something about the brand ambassadorship. So... Are you guys doing like year long brand ambassador programs? Or is it like a six month thing where they're just producing weekly or daily content? I just want a window into it. So right now, personally, there's a company who wants me to become a brand ambassador. And I'm like, I'm in the throes of this with, and I'm, it's, it's neither a science, right? It's neither an art or a science. There's a lot of ambiguity. So from your perspective, right? As the person, as the, as the company owner, the founder, what is it that just that you love that you love about the brand ambassadors and or your ideal, right? Like, what is it that you see really push the needle as it relates to these people besides their following, right? Besides like just the, the reach they have. I think what's interesting about our program is, is we've actually never done any outreach for people to come join it. It's ambassadors who were either customers and bought the product or heard about it. And they're reaching out to us, which creates more of an authentic relationship. And so you know, we look for people who really love the brand, really love the product. We get hundreds and hundreds of requests per week. Uh, so many so we can't necessarily get back to everyone, you know, on a timely sure. basis. And so I think aligning interests with really, you know, authentic fans of the brands has been super important. And the biggest influencers aren't always the best performers. You know, sometimes it's the smaller ones with really, you know, cult-like followings who are the best voices and, Let's be honest, we're, we're a one-year-old brand. It takes decades to build brands that people really trust. And having these amazing ambassadors who can really you know, tell our story and support the brand has been hugely crucial to our growth. What are some of the myths about uh, cookware that you've either debunked on this journey or that you know, I'd love to just share with people? We try to do this thing where it's like, all right, let's, it's, it's, it's debunking time. So what are the things people get wrong about cookware that either your product has solved or that you in your journey to this product have figured out uh, maybe that you learned yourself? I think one is that good cookware actually makes a difference. I think most people think any pans are just any pans. Uh, there are higher quality materials and you do get what you pay for. 
cookware itself in general, it, it seems like a pretty simple product, but it actually is highly complex in the production process and materials. Um, there's a lot of technology that goes into it. And so, you know, I think whether you're buying stainless steel or cast iron or ceramic, there's a lot of benefits and a lot that goes into it. Anything about the materials in particular? I guess ceramic, right? You said ceramic's relatively new, but but something that... Yeah, sure so ceramic's be relatively new. I, I think like a lot of other categories, a lot of brands aren't super transparent about their materials. And I think you yeah. need to be careful and, and really really look into the fine lines of most. Uh, with ceramic, there are a lot of products on the market where ceramic is mixed with Teflon and they don't really tell you that. No one's really sharing testing reports. And so it, it is important to you know, understand who's making your products, what it's made of. And, you know, as a brand, we're as open as we can. We actually share our testing reports if you, you know, want to look into the materials further. Wow, that's awesome. I like that you do that. Give everyone who's listening just a, a price point, a sense of, of what your products are, how much each of them, each of them cost, and what the, uh, the set goes for. Our core cookware set sells for three ninety five. It co- comes with four pots and pans, three lids, and it also comes with an integrated storage system for storing your lids within your cabinet door and, and some pan racks to modularly fit your cabinets. And then our single pieces sell anywhere from ninety five bucks to one hundred and thirty five. So you know we're certainly a premium price provider, but if you look across the spectrum, kind of on the lower end of, of premium when it comes to pricing. Yeah, it sounds like affordable luxury, the price. When, where can people find you? Tell everyone where they can find the product, follow the brand. You can check us out at carawayhome.com. You can also check us out on Goop or Food52 or Crate and Barrel or West Elm and many more. And our Instagram handle is carawayhome as well. I love your Instagram. Super beautiful, super well done. The design is really nice. Obviously the product matches. And so thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your company today. And, and hopefully we can recap in a few years and see where you're at and see all the different products that you've brought to market. Sounds great. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks, Jordan.